You have to live and die on the approach you have. Whatever decision you make, you got to commit to it 100% and not worry about what the result might be. But when you commit to your approach and your decision that you make 100%, you give yourself the best chance to compete on top of the world. It says, my honor rears back. I'm focusing on three things and three things only, guys. When do I start? Read the pitch. As he releases the pitch, I see a 92 mile an hour fastball in the inside corner, and I make contact with his pitch out front of the plate. I instantly see the ball sailing over the green monster into the net. This is 2002 before they had the seats on top of the monster at Fenway Park. I take two steps out of the batter's box and I pump my fist. Yeah! Not because I was pimping, not because I was celebrating, but I was more surprised than anybody in that stadium. Because what I just did no Red Sox player has ever done. I just felt like David beating Goliath. I'm rounding first base and the ground's shaking. The, 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 the stadium's built at the turn of the century. I thought the stadium was going to collapse. The Fenway faithful are going nuts. I just put us ahead with a game-winning home run in the eighth inning. And as I come back to home plate, I was in disbelief. But I had been training for this moment day in and day out, countless hours. You never know what's going to happen, guys. When you have an opportunity, you have a situation, it's all in how you prepare. How you prepare for that moment. What are you doing behind the scenes? What are you doing in the moments of nobody's looking? What are you doing when everybody tells you that you're crazy, that you're stupid, that you shouldn't be able to do this? Your dream's nuts. Your dream's insane. See, you have to behave like whatever you're trying to achieve. I go to spring training as a minor league baseball player. I want to be a major league baseball player. So I showed up to spring training and I behaved like a major league baseball player. You have to behave like what you're trying to achieve, guys, because your behavior will supersede, will come in front of your talent, your ability, your emotions, your feelings, all that stuff. You have to behave. You have to take that action every single day. I showed up and I observed. I watched what the guys were doing and what the guys weren't doing. I behaved like I belonged. And I focused on three things. The first thing I focus on, guys, that you guys need to focus on is your health. You have to focus on your health. If you're not healthy, if you're not in a position with your body to do things that you need to do, you're not going to be able to pursue it. Three simple things you guys can focus on with your health is how you sleep. You've got to get your sleep, how you eat, and exercise. Simple as that. Everybody's different. Get your sleep, care for what you eat, and then exercise. Then I only competed against myself. The second thing is when I went to Major League Baseball camp, I competed against myself. I can't compete against all these other guys because they're so much better than me. I don't even know what I'm doing there, but I competed against myself. And the last thing is, guys, I created resilience. You have to create resilience. If you want to get to where you want to go, you have to create resilience. You have to be resilient with what you're trying to achieve. The last thing is, guys, belief. The most powerful force you'll ever have in life, the most powerful force is for you to stay congruent to what you believe to be true about yourself. These, these are three irrefutable laws, guys. We can argue religion, we can argue politics, we can argue pandemic. You can't refute these. The most powerful force in human nature is for you to stay congruent for you to stay aligned with what you believe to be true about yourself. And your belief system about yourself is what's going to hold, the thing that's going to hold you back from your dream. What do you believe to be true about yourself? What I want to leave with you guys today is the foundation of whatever you do. I want you guys to believe that you deserve the opportunity to go do what you've been called to do. You deserve it. It doesn't matter where you are. I'm living my dream life, my dream house, my dream wife, my dream, everything right now. And it had nothing to do with Major League Baseball. I thought I was supposed to do Major League Baseball. I thought that was my calling. I thought that was my, my, what I was supposed to do. It's the furthest thing of what I was supposed to do. And this is what I was supposed to do. Once you get into momentum, once you understand how to leverage that language, that conversation with yourself, and once you start believing in yourself, guys, believe in yourself. Take one action every single day. Create that belief system. You have to gain credibility with yourself. Nobody else. The one way you're going to get credibility with yourself is by keeping the promises to yourself. 
If you say you're gonna wake up at seven o'clock, wake up at seven o'clock. Set that alarm clock and wake up at seven o'clock. You're gonna wake up at seven o'clock and every part of your mind is gonna tell you not to wake up. You can't do it, you're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly, you can't, whatever that is, you shouldn't be doing it, go back to bed. You have to get up and you have to keep going. Keep that promise to yourself. If you say you're gonna work a certain amount of hours on your business, if you say you're gonna watch what you eat, say watch what you drink, whatever that might be, keep that promise to yourself. Once you keep that promise to yourself, guys, you'll start gaining credibility with yourself. You need promises and credibility with yourself to have a foundation to stand on your belief system that you guys. And I walk on the plane to the flight attendant and I walk onto the, the pilots and I'm like, how you guys doing? Nice to see you guys. And I sit down in my seat and I have to deal with Shea Hillenbrand. I look out the window and that smile goes away because the thoughts going through my mind are, this is all it is? This is nothing like what I ever imagined. I have it all. My paychecks are $400,000 each two weeks and I got, I got everything and I have nothing on the inside. So I leave, I walk away. And I have a crazy idea of pursuing my second childhood dream. Remember what that was, guys? I bought a 38-acre horse farm in Southern Gilbert, Val Vista and Hunt Highway. I spent $5 million on that farm, and I ran, and I numbed, and I fled from that pain that I had because I attached that pain to the game of playing Major League Baseball because I hated everything about it. I hated it. I despised it. I didn't want anything to do with it while I'm living out my dream. I accumulate 300 farm and exotic animals. I have camels, kangaroos, llamas, alpacas, monkeys, raccoons. I had 200, two 800 pound pigs, Wilshire pigs, Taco Bell and Gilbert. <laughs> I had a blind horse, a CNI pony for the blind horse, absolutely amazing. I had a three legged goat named Trace. I had a Holstein cow named Biggie Smalls and a mini donkey named what? Tupac. I had to keep Tupac over here on the side of the farm and Biggie Smalls over here because when we left that night, they'd have coast to coast war. Stop it, guys. <laughs> but I had a vision. I had a vision of rescuing and rehabilitating these animals from un with unconditional love. And I had goats and lambs and sheep in my, in my bathroom giving them IVs. And, and just like when everybody else gave up on them, like they were even giving up on themselves. And I'm sitting there just caressing them and their soul would light back up. And, and I said, this animal's ready. They're like, what are you talking about? I was like, take them to the petting zoo. And I had these petting zoo animals interact with inner city disabled and child crisis children in our community here through my nonprofit foundation against all odds. The joy I received witnessing my animals transform thousands of children's lives in our community was absolutely priceless. I'm bound to get fulfillment now. I'm bound to have it, guys. See, Major League Baseball didn't do it. The glory didn't do it. The fame didn't do it. The status didn't do it. All the, everything I had up there on top of the world, it didn't fill that void inside myself because regardless of where you are, if you're in a $10 million mansion or you're in a $10,000 house or a trailer, you still have to put your head on a pillow each and every night and I couldn't do that. The first word out of my mouth was the F word every single day. Ah! My wife was like, what's wrong? And I said, you'll never understand what's wrong because I have no clue. I don't know who I am. I couldn't find fulfillment through that either. Eight years ago, guys, I found myself on the floor of a van. I purchased a 10 passenger van to help kids in my, my community. I was scrounging up change out of my cup holder in my, my van just to feed my three children Little Caesar's pizza. I found myself parked outside my ex-wife's house eight years ago on the floor of this van, motionless, after overdosing on drugs and alcohol. Here's a guy so many people envy. My children are going to school telling all their friends that their daddy played for the Diamondbacks. Everybody knows who I am. A lot of people, when I walk through the front doors of this hotel, oh my gosh, Shay Hillerman, I'm like, only if you knew. Only if you knew what I had to go through to get to where I am now. And as the soul's leaving the top of my head, guys, and I'm clinging onto my last breath, I had nobody else in my life because I burnt every single bridge. The thoughts going through my mind are, you're a failure. You lost everything. What kind of idiot does this? What would your parents think if you left the world today, Shay? What kind of dad would do this to your kids? You said you quit baseball for your kids. You're a hypocrite. You're a liar. You're flawed. That's what I was talking to myself about. 
Those are the conversations I was having in my mind when I was trying to just escape my reality of nothingness and hell seven years ago after living out both my childhood dreams. My answer to that question was, it went through my mind, I don't know. I'm nothing if I don't have baseball. I let go, guys. I'm so tired of fighting that game and just trying to, to figure out, like, to, 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 to prove to everybody who I am and everybody coming at me and, and wanting this and wanting that and you're this and you're that and all I am to beat myself up. You're just a piece of crap, Shay. I was tired of fighting that game because my name had become the game, my identity. So I let go. I don't know if I died or if I fell asleep. Eight years ago, guys, by the grace of God, the next day, the, 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 the sun went through the front windshield of my van and went into my eyes and woke me up. And when I woke up and came to, I realized I didn't have any side effects. I had nothing. It was really eerie. I had no nausea, no stomach ache, no headache, no nothing. And the concoction of pills and alcohol I took and consumed the night before, I should have had two options, either dead or in a hospital. Because when you go to the top, you have an obsessive personality and you do anything to achieve what you set out to achieve and don't let anything get in your way. I wasn't an alcoholic, guys. I wasn't a drug addict, guys. I didn't go to rehab, guys. I was just trying to run numb and flee from that pain I had inside myself, from the perspective I formed, from the pain points and the pressure points in my life. So that's what I want to challenge every one of you in here right now. All of us have pain points and pressure in our life right now. That perspective that you form from those pain points and, uh, uh, and um, pressure is going to either grant you access or it's going to block your access to the power you have inside yourself. My perspective blocked the access. It got me to the top, but I wasn't able to ever achieve and fulfill what I was been here to do because I got in my own way. I'd sit at the top deck of the stadium with season tickets with my mom and my best friend. I'd have my chocolate malt in one hand, I'd have my nachos in my other hand, and I'd always tell them I'm gonna be down there someday from eight, nine, 10, 11 years old. I'm gonna be down there someday. What you guys need to understand, you're not too old to re-tap into that dream or that vision that's been given to you. See, visualization is the number one tool that we have in our tool belt because your mind cannot discern the difference, can tell the difference between imagination and reality. But so many of us, our mind is fixated on the limited beliefs and the nonsense rambling on our minds from the experiences and the stories we tell ourselves continually over and over and over. I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable. My dad maybe not love me. And I said to myself, guys, I said, I gotta take two, two major decisions. I have two major decisions right now that I have to do. Nobody else can do it for me. That's to take back control and own my life for once. And I never had to do that being a professional athlete, a celebrity, superstar, major league baseball player. I could hide behind the veil of a major league baseball player and treat everybody in this room like crap and treat you guys horribly, but I can leave and get my limousine and everybody out there will love me. I couldn't hide behind that anymore. So the way I took control of my life is I said, man, I got to get myself into momentum. So seven years ago, I said, I got to get into momentum. See, I, the way I got into momentum, guys, is that I, I just started stacking little wins on top of each other. doesn't matter where you are right now. I know there's one person, at least in this room, that's like, like one breath away from giving up. Not committing to that, but I'm just saying one breath away from giving up on your dream, on your vision, on, on who you are, and trying to fall victim to and uh, complacency to the mediocrity. See, a lot of us are confined inside our internal zoo. Our internal zoo is that, that, that belief system, that internal operating system of how we run. That's what's gonna drive who we truly are and what we truly do. And until we go inside there and address that, nothing will ever change, guys. And what's gonna fill that gap with where you are right now and where you wanna go is ego. A lot of people that have success have ego. So you can use your ego to get to the top, guys, but your ego is not gonna keep you there and you'll never find fulfillment with your ego. See, ego stands for edging God out, okay? Whatever you believe or wherever you are, you have to get into momentum. And when I got into momentum, guys, it's taken one step at a time. For so many of us, momentum means I have to stop the bleeding. I can't go from level one to level seven to level eight to level nine. I can't be where all these other guys are because I have to stop the bleeding. For me, it was like I had to get up every day. I had to start taking care of my health again. I had to start being aware of how I communicated with myself. And I had to start believing in myself again. You have to get in momentum. And when you get into momentum, life will reward you. I'm telling you, this is a law. 
you will get rewarded once you get into momentum in any area of your life. Life's about decisions, guys, and opportunities that we take advantage of when we get presented with them. We never know when we're gonna get presented with an opportunity that gives us a chance to go to the next level or take us from where we wanna go right now, our vision from ideology to reality. That's fine, you can say whatever you want, but I learned this from Barry Bonds, the best hitter ever. And I can tell you exactly how he did it. I integrated it into my program and tweaked my swing and did my stuff. And then I'm a two-time third baseman all-star. I have zero clue how to field a ground ball, guys. Zero clue. It's a process, right? So what did I do? I went to the best guy in the team, Omar Vizquel. He had 11 gold gloves. And I'm like, hey, how do you do it? And he taught me. And it's about being a student of the game that gets you to the position to go out there and compete with everybody else. But first and foremost, we have to get out of our own way. I say it like a level system, a level up system, guys. I was like operating at a level seven. That was my full potential of what I could do. So think about in your business, wherever you are, like you're operating against level 10s, 11s, and 12s. Like I was playing against the best, like people making $400 million, insane stuff. They're doing stuff that you couldn't even imagine. So how does a level seven potential operate and compete against, and not just compete against, but have success against 10s, 11s, and 12s. It's figuring out how you play the game. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? When you talk to yourself, the most important conversation you'll ever have in your life is a conversation you have with yourself, not with God or a higher power or your spouse or your boss or your, your kids or, or whatever. It's with yourself. And what keeps so many people back is themselves and the voice and the language they use with yourself. Because that language and that conversation you have with yourself, guys, is the foundation of who you are. People can find themselves inside their internal zoo, that shackled to the status quo and complacency and, and mediocrity. And I said, you wanna hear something funny? He said, what? I said, imagine being someone who lived your childhood dream of playing Major League Baseball, flying the private jets, the mansions, multiple vehicles, uh, anything and everything I wanted on top of the world, having everything but fulfillment and didn't know who I was. And I definitely didn't own my life because I didn't have to because I'm a God. I had little girls in the stands hold up signs saying, will you marry me, Shay? Like, how do you process that? And I do autograph signings for $10,000 an hour. Pay attention, dude, $10,000 an hour. And girls would come to the table, preteen girls, crying and shaking just because they got to meet me. Like I was Justin Bieber. So it's like, how do you process that? Because they couldn't see that that pain-driven game that I was playing and that internal battle that I was fighting and, and all that stuff that I was going through and living that life, my dream, both my childhood dreams and, and, and actively living that in real time and hating who I am because I don't know who I am. So I'm talking to this gentleman and I was like, imagine doing that and then losing everything. And being one breath away from losing your life and giving up. Because eight years ago, I was in the floor of a van. And after I overdosed on drugs and alcohol, I tried to flee, run numb, and, and get away from that pain always by myself. With nobody else around. Motionless on the floor of this van. And this is somebody that so many people envy. And as the soul's leaving the top of my head and I'm clinging on to my last breath, this van was parked outside my ex-wife's house with my three beautiful adopted children inside, an arm's distance away. The children I admired so much, the reason why I quit baseball the first time. And I'm laying there, and the thoughts going through my mind are, you're a failure, you're a loser, you lost everything. What would your parents think if you left this world today, Shay? What kind of dad would do, do this to his kids? My answer to that was, I don't know. I'm nothing if I don't have baseball. So I let go. I don't know if I died if I fell asleep because the game had become my name, my identity. And I'm sharing this with this gentleman. And I'm like, imagine being there and going through all that stuff that you envisioned and you imagined and being 46 years whole. But check this out, buddy. You know what's crazy? I found my smile. When you find your smile, guys, everything else takes care of itself. You just walk through doors. I got the goosebumps right now, man. You walk through doors. You smile and walk through a door, but you have to take care of yourself. So many of us are sitting here in limbo. So many of us are sitting here in this spot of just a land of nothingness, just like I'm all alone. But I got off the floor of that van 
And I said, man, I gotta make a decision. I was forced with two crazy, powerful, angry, painful decisions. I had to take back control and own my life. I had to do it, nobody else. And unfortunately, what happens with so many people, there's two ways, you either get humbled or life will humble you. A lot of guys, a lot of people, especially men, have to go through a traumatic experience to, to, to have that to be an aha moment. And I'm here and uh, uh, to my last breath, I'm gonna use my voice to help people understand like, like, dude, like, I don't want you to go through what I went through. But the thing is, is I found it. The only thing I can share with you guys is like, I, I did so much work because skill sets have utility, right guys? You have to gain the skill sets of whatever you're trying to achieve. I did so much work, I should have never made it, but I became so good that they had to play me. And that's your decision. <laughs> Show up. You never know who you're gonna come across, guys. Yeah. You never know what you could do. I, never, I, I cracked home runs, like, like, it's crazy because I could step to the plate in Yankee Stadium. I had the third highest active batting average in Yankee Stadium behind Paul Konerko, Ichiro Suzuki, and myself. I was the third best player in Yankee Stadium, the biggest stage in baseball, with 40,000 fans every night. I rocked it there. I could step to the plate and I could perform. But what happens is so many of us put all of our eggs in one basket to perform in our profession. If I just provide, if I just have status, if I just have success, if I just achieve this, all this other stuff's gonna go away. So I'd, I'd be on ESPN, I'd ruin the Yankees fans' nights, and I'd, I'd be all over, have a game-winning home run, and I'd go out with my entourage, stupid, and I'd have $4,000 dinners at a five-star restaurant, and I'd sit to the supper table, and I, I couldn't step to the plate there because I'd almost pee my pants every time because I had fear of walking across the restaurant to use the restroom and fear of everybody staring at me. No self-esteem, no self-worth. So that's an extreme example, but so many of us put our eggs in the basket of performance, our job, and our health goes by the wayside. It's the number one thing we gotta take care of, right? Three things to help you guys with health is sleep, exercise, and eat. Awesome. Simple, simple. 2005, I made the All-Star Game for the Toronto Blue Jays. We're playing in Detroit, Michigan. I take a Citation 10 private jet from the Chandler Airport to, to uh, Detroit, Michigan. You have to have a 5,000 foot runway to have private jets take off from there. This runway was 4,995 feet. I got clearance because I am big, bad, shade pimping. Riding off my ego. So here I am flying to the All-Star Game, my childhood dream from Chandler, Arizona to Detroit, Michigan in a Citation 10 jet. Imagine yourself, pilot, co-pilot, 10 passenger, multi-million dollar jet. This is the fastest civilian jet in the world. I'm flying at 64,000 feet, going 640 miles an hour. A normal commercial airliner flies about 35, 40,000 feet, goes about 300, 400 miles an hour, that's it. I'm on top, just going like a bullet. And I'm sitting there by myself, getting ready to go play in front of 100 million people the next day. Didn't have any distractions. No family, no kids, no wife. No entourage, no friends with me, by myself. I look out the window, I can't even see the ground, I'm so high. You know the thoughts going through my mind, guys? This all it is? It, really? I'm living it. I'm doing the American dream that everybody thought they should do. I, get, I beat it against all odds. Everybody told me no, I can't do it. And I've swung a baseball bat a million times and I'd be working with my friends, wouldn't work. And everybody out there, all my comrades, and everybody's like hanging out, I'm working, and I did it. And I'm cracking home runs and I'm making millions and millions of dollars. And I hate myself. I hate everything about this. But I had to go on that night, the next day, and put my smile on and perform. See, every time I took a picture with a fan, guys, I always smiled. Because you never know what somebody's going through. You guys never know what anybody's going through that's lost, that's in that spot of just being able to be one breath away from giving up. And if you just give them a smile, make them noticed, that might give them an opportunity to get through one more day. So I always smiled because I never knew what anybody was going through that came and took a picture with me. I've been looking for my smile and my identity, my purpose of who I am my whole life. And I think a lot of us do that. 
is what we happen with us is that we try to find that, fill that void with external success. And if I just do this, and if I just do that, and if I get this, I'm telling you guys, it don't work. The greatest feeling in the world is discovering who you are. You're going to discover gifts and talents that you didn't know you have and utilize those and strengthen those and get those skill sets that are wrapped around those and get that, that, that purpose and that mission and that vision and go out there and deploy that and use that to impact somebody else's life. There's no better